Sweet. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into the settings here. And I'll highlight first, if you did see our books webinar, some of these settings are kind of shared. Um, I'll highlight those ones as we go through because, you know, in some cases, if you change something in subscriptions, it's also going to change it in books automatically. So I think it's important just to know that with some of these uh, settings as we go through. So kind of jumping in here, when you first log into Zoho subscriptions, you're going to see that settings cog up in the top right. Um, it seems like every month, one more Zoho app gets moved over where their settings icon is that cog. They're kind of streamlining that across all the different applications so that it's just one icon. So up there in the top right, if we open up that cog, it's basically going to pull out a whole set of our settings here. And so if you are a books user, this is probably looking pretty familiar. Um, some of these settings are exactly the same. Um, so we'll jump through these now. So we'll go ahead and start with the organization profile. This is kind of just the top level information about your company. Um, so this is things like your logo, which actually will show up on your subscription pages. So it's important to put that in at a nice uh, aspect ratio and quality. Um, kind of the standard across the Zoho Books applications is 240 by 240 in terms of the pixels. Uh, we, for this webinar, decided to do a little side venture here doing the Zanata car wash and hot dog stand. So. Um, that logo, we just kind of pulled off of Google and dropped it right in here and everything looks great. Um, moving down the page, you know, you can define what the URL should be of your portal. Um, that can be important because it shows up in the URLs, depending on how you're gonna actually capture um, the payment information that, that URL may be visible. So you wanna make sure that you change that if necessary. Um, kind of moving down, just some things that again are similar to books. You can decide on your industry type uh, business location, the company address, moving down the page, setting up things like your primary contact and any of your email senders. You can define your fiscal year, your tax basis, you know, all these various elements. But again, important to keep in mind, this is all going to affect books. So if I change my fiscal year here, I'm changing it inside of books. Now, because it's all part of your finance suite, that's probably how you'd want it. But it's just important to know that, uh, you know, a lot of these settings are shared. Uh, moving down into roles, uh, this is kind of where it does diverge from books. Um, so within books, you have your own set of profiles and roles because the various items inside of books are different. You know, you're going to set up permissions around a sales order. Over here in subscriptions, there are no sales orders. So we've got a different set of roles and permissions. So up in the top right, I can go ahead and create a new role. And we'll see again, similar to books, you kind of get this line by line ability to choose what people should be able to do and see and create, you know, and, and delete. So if we're going to set up kind of a basic example role here, maybe we would want to give them, you know, view permissions to any products and plans or add ons and coupons. Maybe we don't want this user to be able to create a coupon, right? They could share with their friends for 100% discount, right? Maybe this is just kind of a customer service person who needs to know what these products and plans are, but might not need to work with them specifically and change the pricing or change the features uh, that are listed on any of these plans. Um, but in that same case, maybe for the customers, we want this person to be able to go in and you know update a customer's phone number or update a customer's email that's on file for the subscription. So we might wanna give them the ability to actually create or edit customers and so you can kind of go line by line based on the specific item or the specific functionality that you want to adjust. That also affects down even what types of settings they can work with, what types of reports they can pull, if they can download or create any documents in the system or edit any active subscriptions. Um, so again, you'll want to go in here. There's a lot of detail and you want to think through kind of the use case and functions for all these various people that are working in subscriptions as you go ahead and set these up. Um, and so now we'll kind of move forward from the users and roles here into our preferences. This is kind of, again, some of these are going to be shared with books. So if you wanted to change the invoice naming system, maybe you want a different prefix or you wanted to start with a different set of numbers, you could change that here. Um, some of the additional settings around invoices for grouping them and calendar billing, those are unique to subscriptions because you're kind of thinking about when you want these invoices to go out or be billed. Um, but the invoice numbering and custom fields are going to be applied to books, inventory, all those various settings. 
or all those various applications. You also have a suite of branding tools that you can go ahead and install. So again, here's where we've kind of dropped in our logo. Um, you can set up some different themes for kind of how you want the customer portal to look and how you want your sign up page to look. Um, you know, you can kind of go through there. I think they've got some default ones. And, you know, if you go a little deeper, you can set up some various hex codes as well in there. Um, now the subscription portal, this is something that you might want on or you might not just depending on your business. So the portal will basically allow people to log in as a client to Zoho Books and see their subscriptions, you know, see their next billing dates. Um, you can set up some settings if you want them to be able to cancel or upgrade through that, or if you kind of want it to be view only. Um, one important thing to note is that um, the checkbox down there at the bottom to enable customer portal for customers automatically is oftentimes checked when you uh, um, kind of start up with subscriptions. So oftentimes you might want to go through and turn that off just at the beginning. You know, you could always activate it later when you've got five or 10 people, once you've spent some time thinking about how you want people to interact with the portal. Um, customers, not much here. You kind of have a quick setting to allow duplicates for the customer's display name, as well as the ability to customize all of your custom fields and buttons that you want on the page. Again, similar to books. Um, within the subscriptions tab, we can go through and determine what our naming convention should be for subscriptions. Um, you can also decide whether you want to enable pause and resume. That's actually a new feature that they added not too long ago. Generally, you're going to want that on. It's not going to do anything unless you choose to pause it. So it's just another feature that you can have enabled. And lastly, you can set up partial payments. Um, Realistically, with the fact that you're going to be auto billing the majority of these subscriptions, um, you know, this would be really only used if someone's activated through the portal. Uh, maybe they want to go into the portal and prepay half of next month, or, you know, maybe their card declined and so they want to pay half of it now and, you know, you can work out something with them. So you might want that on, but generally it's only going to come up if you are not auto billing or if you are uh, accessing through the portal. Um, not too many options around products. Brett, Brett's going to dive deep into how to set up the products later. Um, this is just a quick setting if you want to have specific images for your plans. Generally, you do, and we'll show you why later when it comes to building out a widget. Um, so, you know, this, this will oftentimes just have on for people. Um, payment mode. So this is kind of an interesting little menu here. You don't really do much in here. Um, you'll actually go into the payment processing integrations to set this up. Uh, credit notes, we're going to skip. Um, that would be if you ever needed to do a partial refund or a credit back on a previous subscription, but uh, those are just going to be your settings. You know, how do you want them named? Uh, in here is kind of important. You can set up some default address formats for how you want things to appear on um, invoices or on, you know, anything that's going to be sent out to the customer as a document. Um, so good to come in here and customize these. Oftentimes the defaults are going to work for you, but if you had a specific reason to format it differently, this is where you would go to do that. Um, now with retry settings, uh, the, this is kind of where some of the power of Zoho subscription lives. Um, if you're familiar with the term, the Dunning process, um, it's basically a standard way that subscription management tools will retry a credit card if it fails. Um, so in this case, right, we're kind of able to set up how many times do we want it to retry um, how, many, how many days do we want it to wait between retrying a, a failed credit card charge? And then we can also customize what emails we want to go out. Uh, in this case, right, all three failures would send the same email, but maybe you wanted to do a, you know, hey, just letting you know your card failed as the first email. The second one you go kind of more of a warning. And the last one is a, hey, you're, you know, your service is going to turn off if we can't figure something out here. Um, so kind of able to customize those and set up the rules that you want for subscriptions to try to um, charge credit cards if they do fail. Uh, moving forward through taxes, I mean, you can go through here and set up sales taxes for every various state. We strongly recommend using Avalara, um, especially with subscription services, different states tax them differently. Some states will tax digital services, some will not. So you really don't want to monkey around with this stuff. If it's a very simple product and maybe you just sell into a couple states, it's very obvious what your taxing needs to be. You could set it up manually. 
Um, but Avalar is just, it's worth the extra cost to have that running yeah, it's across all the so books It's so important apps. because sometimes it's right down to the very zip code that somebody's living in. You can have a city tax and all, and so you really, it's almost impossible to set it up yourself unless you're only selling in one specific you know, mm -hmm. city, one location, just like that. Great. You can do it yourself, but uh, <clears throat> that's really what you would not be using this product for. So like Tyler said, Avalara. Um, one last little note on that. Installing Avalara here will also integrate it to Zoho Books. You're kind of installing it for the full finance suite once you do turn it on. Um, under templates is kind of a simplified version of what we'll see over in books. You can choose whether or not these should go out to people automatically. Um, but it does give you the ability to customize these PDFs. Again, changes here are going to reflect over inside of books. Our next section here, I'm highlighting on the left with a the red box um, on this page, because once you click hosted payment pages, it's actually going to open you up into a full screen. Uh, this is kind of where you can go in and customize what the actual page looks like when someone is going to pay. Um, this is all pretty basic information. If you wanted to change the names of columns, if you wanted to require certain fields, you can kind of go through here and do that. Um, over on the left-hand side are all the various sections that you might want to customize. But really, this is just working with a pretty basic little form where you're going to add or remove fields and decide what should be mandatory. Um, next, there's kind of a whole set of email notifications that are going to be on by default. Um, these are things like their portal information, requesting payment methods if things fail, notifications if subscriptions are updated, canceled, expired, and so on. Um, this tab is also where you'll go to change any of those templates. So under the word default, I could actually pull that up and change the language that I have. Uh, I would recommend doing that if you're going to get started with subscriptions. You're going to want to go through all these various emails, whether it's the retry settings, the email notifications here. They're not bad, but they're all very, very plain. Um, so you might just want to dress them up a little bit, whether it's with a little HTML or just some better language and fonts. Um, they all are clear and they communicate what they mean, but you know, you'll probably want to add your own branding and language uh, around these notifications. Um, next, we have a little section here for reminders. This is really just if an invoice has become overdue. Um, Oftentimes, again, these are really only going to come into play if you're not auto charging, because if you are trying to auto charge, it's really the retry settings that are going to apply before any of these reminders are. But if something failed through the entire retry setting, then you would start having these invoice reminders go out to get paid on that transaction. Uh, lastly here, and, and we won't dig too much into this, but they do, of course, have the full suite of automation tools um, within Zoho subscriptions. So whether you want to set up a webhook, maybe post some data out to your own system, um, set up some automated emails that don't quite fit with the default ones that they have set up, or if you wanted to run any custom deluge functions like we often do, you know, maybe you want to build on top of the CRM integration or you know, post some ticket over to desk to do some onboarding if someone subscribes, you could code all that out here with custom functions uh, using a variety of triggers. So, you know, things like the subscription being created, each time a payment goes against the subscription and so on and so forth. Um, lastly here, one of our last ones on this page is the developer space. I'll just touch on this really quickly. It really just matters if you are running custom code into here, you might just wanna keep an eye on what is consuming your API credits each day, just to make sure that you never run out or have any issues where your code is gonna stop running. This only matters if you're running custom automation. So creating a subscription, a subscription payment, none of those consume API calls, only custom functions or integrations do. And lastly, we'll kind of jump through the different integrations that you can plug in. Um, SMS integration will allow you to do a variety of automated texts out to your customers. It all runs through Twilio and a lot of this is kind of default. So they're gonna set up some basic templates, some basic workflows for you if you wanna roll this out. Of course, you're going to need some automated payments in here. Uh, the big one, as always, is going to be Stripe. But of course, you could use Authorize.net. You can use WePay, PayPal, any of these. The one I will highlight that is not here is Square. Um, and it's actually a Square thing that they don't work as much around auto charging. Um, so you could set them up if you wanted to do a recurring invoice that gets sent and then they choose to pay it. Uh, but if you want it to automatically charge, we always recommend using Stripe. It's kind of the best in class for you know, making this easy. 
Next here, of course, the whole gambit of Zoho applications, whether it's CRM, books, analytics, click for notifications, desk, if you want to reference a subscription while you're working on a ticket. Um, this could be its own whole own video, but just know that subscriptions is tightly tied into really the whole variety of Zoho applications. Um, and you can build on top of that using the custom functions as well. Now they do also have a bunch of different integrations here, things like Zapier, of course, uh, WordPress to embed hosted payment pages a little bit easier. I will highlight you don't need to use that integration to get these on the WordPress. It'll give you the code directly. But if you do want an easier way to just pull that in, you can surely do that. And then, of course, you know, Zendesk, Slack, Avalar, like we talked about, um, and so on. And then lastly, I do just like to highlight this. There is one little section here to pull a data backup. So whenever in doubt, you can just come in here and pull every single data element out of subscriptions into some CSVs if you ever wanted to just have a local copy of anything um, as a backup. All right. And with that, we're going to wrap it up. If you have any questions or comments, please head over to designata.com and drop us a line. And on the website is where you'll find all of our episodes of our podcast, where we cover all of the weekly news of Zoho every single Monday. Uh, we'll have links out to any of those updates. As always, we'd love if you would follow us on your favorite social media platform and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app, as well as on YouTube. We'll see you next time.